You've probably heard the phrase trial and error. It's a pretty fair summary of how a lot of engineering works. Build something, test it, tweak it. But what if the trial and error wasn't just manual? What if it was fast, constant, and then by a robot that learns? Dr. Keith Brown is doing just that. He's a mechanical engineer whose lab is redefining how we build materials that protect us by combining artificial intelligence, robotics, and a lot of crushed plastic. We were looking to explore combinations of materials and structure that absorb mechanical energy. This is important in things like protective equipment, safety equipment, crumple zones in cars, where you need to protect things. Brown and his team have developed something they call Mama Bear. It's part machine, part AI scientist, and entirely focused on one thing, finding the best possible material shapes to absorb mechanical energy. Here's how it works. Mama Bear designs a structure, 3D prints it, tests how well it absorbs force, and uses that data to build a better version next time. This happens on repeat, again, and again, and again. An experiment that's performed by Mama Bear it comprises first designing a three-dimensional structure, printing it, retrieving it with robotic arm, and then compressing it to failure. That phrase, compressing it to failure, isn't just cool-sounding engineering speak. It means literally smashing a shape until it crumples to see how much energy it can take before breaking. Each test takes 30 to 60 minutes, but with five robots working simultaneously, they can run up to 100 experiments in a single day. Since we developed the system in 2018, it's run about 30,000 experiments. Let that sink in. 30,000 crushed shapes, all to find one optimal design for energy absorption. That ultimate design, they named it Willow. It's basically a cylindrical shell that we've perturbed. And the thing about cylindrical shells is that mechanically speaking, they're very prone to being poor because they have a buckling phenomena and they're very susceptible to defects. So it's actually surprising that a, a cylindrical shell could be so efficient. And so what Mama Bear learned how to do was to use complicated twists and a tapering shape that allowed it to have really efficient plasticity that prevented buckling from being a big mechanical factor. What's remarkable is how Mama Bear kept improving. With every crust shape, it learned. It's important to note the Mama Bear is a closed loop system that learns from each experiment. So after each experiment takes place, the data is analyzed, and then it builds a sophisticated model to try to understand how the design choices influence the mechanical properties. So each experiment's learning, and it's building a new understanding as it goes, trying to find better and better structures. So why does this matter? because we now have a way to automate discovery in mechanical engineering, where it once took months or even years to test and refine materials for impact protection, this robot scientist can run tens of thousands of tests and evolve its way to a better design. This experiment is important because the structures we make can be used for important applications, things like crumple zones in cars, cushioning in helmet pads, or protective equipment in, in shipping containers, things like this that protect the things that we care about. Right now, the designs are already being used, and there's more coming. The discoveries we've made as part of this project are being used currently to develop new helmet pad materials and are available for larger scale mechanical studies that we're currently running. The data Mama Bear generates doesn't just help one lab. It's open source. Brown's team makes it publicly available so that engineers everywhere can use it. The data is available to anyone who wants it. A system like the one we've developed that allows you to generate tens of thousands of experiments and share that data publicly allows for the community to develop these kinds of models that are only possible in fields with large amounts of data. The key to all this is additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, which allows for almost limitless experimentation in geometry. When we design things with subtractive or conventional manufacturing, each additional piece of complexity we add takes time. Every cut we add takes time. However, with additive manufacturing, we get that complexity completely for free. It's just as easy to make an extremely complicated shape as it is to make a cube. And so as a result, we can take advantage of that. We can make structures that are extremely complicated. But it's not just the robot doing the thinking. Brown emphasized that even in a so-called self-driving lab, the human element is crucial. 
what people call a self-driving lab, which makes you think that this is a system that operates by itself. But the thing that we realized in running this is that the people interacting with the system over a two-year span make a lot of choices and, and make a lot of decisions. And we actually studied that piece of it and wrote a paper called Driving School for Self-Driving Labs because we wanted to understand how should you interact with a system that's self-driving and what sort of choices should you make? What should you be looking at? It's this blend, the automated intelligence and human creativity that's pushing mechanical engineering into new territory. And AI, it's at the center of all of it. AI is transforming every piece of the mechanical engineering field, from how we analyze data to how we think about and, and analogamate that data to how we generate new models and generate new ideas. It's become a tool that's both used for analysis and, and writing emails these days. And so it's really in every piece of our field. Thanks to researchers like Dr. Brown and funding from the U.S. National Science Foundation, the materials of tomorrow might not just be stronger, but smarter too. We hope you enjoyed How AI is Shaping the Future of Mechanical Engineering. Please consider subscribing. And if you'd like to hear about current scientific research from the researchers conducting it, check out NSF's Discovery Files podcast.